Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Suspense is proud to present for the first time to an American radio audience an actress well known to the listeners of the British and Canadian Broadcasting Corporations. Miss Joy LaFleur has twice been named the best actress of the year by the Radio Critics of Canada and has been invited this summer to play Hamlet's mother, Queen Gertrude, in the Shakespearean Festival at Stratford, Ontario. In the tale of suspense you are about to hear, she plays a quite different role. Emily, the tragically disturbed wife, uncertain from moment to moment whether her husband loves her more than life itself or is planning her imminent murder. Listen, then, as Joy LaFleur stars in Celebration, which begins in exactly one minute. Fellas, and you gals, too, have you ever thought about brushing up on some of those high school subjects you found kind of tough? Or maybe studying for a university diploma? Being in the service, you have a chance to enter the largest classroom in the world and join millions of other American service personnel stationed in almost every corner of the globe. Men and women who have taken elementary, high school, or college courses university extension courses, as well as business and technical vocational training. Where is this fabulous classroom located? Wherever you are. That's right. There isn't a camp, installation, or ship which can't be reached by the services of USAFI, the United States Armed Forces Institute. Whether you're interested in a correspondence course, a self-teaching course which doesn't require the submission of lessons, or if you'd like to study with a group, USAFI can offer you what you want. For a uniform education, study with Yusafi. And now, Miss Joy LaFleur in Celebration, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Todd was coming for me. Oh, as I packed my suitcase, I looked out of the windows and I could see the flower gardens and the green lawns and some of the girls were playing badminton and some were in the pool and Todd was coming for me and I had a surprise for him. Now, well, let me see, where's my pink sweater? At the bottom drawer? Oh, it was here, I think. Well, where's the white one? Oh, dear. I couldn't seem to find anything. Oh, but I didn't care. Todd was coming for me and I knew what he'd say. He'd say... Oh, Emily, Emily, how I've missed you. Mm. He'd hold me so hard and he'd kiss me and kiss me. He'd kiss me all over. Oh, darling. And then I'd tell him, I'd tell him about the surprise. I'd say, who's there? Who's there? Mrs. Ward? Uh, yes. It's Mrs. Halleck. Oh, um, one moment, Mrs. Halleck. I didn't want her to see my suitcase, so I, I pushed it under the bed. Come in, Mrs. Halleck. Your husband just phoned Mrs. Ward. He'll be here soon. Oh, Todd's such a darling. Thank you, Mrs. Halleck. You've been so kind to me. Well, I try to be, to all the ladies. No, I just have to put on my perfume. It's Passionate Night. Mm. Do you like it? Mm. Very nice. Oh, careful, you don't spill it. Oh, dear. Now, one drop behind each ear for those who pass, one on each wrist for those who linger, <laughs> and one on the nape of the neck for those one never sees, and one on the forehead for a blessing. Oh, a blessing for Todd. Oh, dear, I dropped it. I, I just can't seem to hold things. Well, it, it didn't break. Here, I'll wipe it up. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Halley. Oh, how do you like the way I'm doing my hair? Hmm? Oh, very nice. Shall I take it down and do it over again? Oh, no. Oh, just look at me. I used to fill this dress out, and now I look like a scarecrow in it. Don't I? You look just lovely. Now, you have everything, hat, gloves, purse? Oh, of course. Well, you remember last time you went for a drive? Last time? When did I... Oh, well, never mind. Now, let's sort these things on the bed. Oh. Oh, I didn't see your suitcase. Oh, oh that? Well, I, I was just putting some things away, and I... Were you planning to be away longer than for a drive and dinner? Well, I... I thought I wouldn't come back tonight. Oh, I'll be coming back here to the club often. I, I love my friends here. Mika, that girl that writes the plays, and, and Sadie, that newspaper woman. Oh, she's so witty. It's so stimulating being here with all these famous women. Oh, I just wouldn't think of not coming back. Well, a change might be the thing for you now, dear. But that's what I thought. You see, we're not equipped to give you all the attention you should have. Oh, uh, attention? 
Did you want to put this bunch of letters in your suitcase, too? Give them to me. They're Todd's letters. I couldn't leave them. Oh, Todd simply adores me, Mrs. Halleck. I'm sure he does. Look, just listen to this and you'll see. Oh, you mean... No, no, here it is. Darling, you are my happiness. I can't live without you. You're as necessary as the air I breathe. Todd's a poet, really. When I looked up, she was gone. She left while I was reading. I knew what she'd do. She'd tell Todd I dropped that perfume. I think you should understand, Mr. Ford. I could hear her talking to someone downstairs in the lobby. I recognized Todd's voice. What were they talking about? I slipped out of my room, down the corridor to the head of the stairs, and I listened. You would be better off in a place where she could get your personal attention. Why, that woman, that two-faced... I hurried back to my room, and I closed the door. And a moment later, she came in and told me Todd was waiting downstairs. I didn't say a word. She helped me get ready and closed my suitcase and carried it down for me. And then there was Todd, smiling, and his arms outstretched. Oh, darling. Oh, Todd, Todd. Emily. Oh, Emily, how I've missed you. How I've wanted to kiss you and hold you in my arms like this. No, not here, dear. Let's go where we can be alone. All right. You know, today's an important day, darling. Our eighth wedding anniversary. Why, Todd, we were married only six weeks ago. I mean... I never can remember dates. <laughs> never mind. We're going to celebrate. Oh, darling. Really celebrate this anniversary. We're going to all the places we used to go. The lake, that, that little Italian restaurant we used to like so well. Todd, I've got a surprise for Save you. Save it, dear. Uh, till we get into the car. No, but it's... Uh, tell me on the way to the lake. <laughs> Smell those pines. Mm, love them. Todd, didn't you wonder why I brought a suitcase? Oh, yes, I did, but... Well, that's because of the surprise. Oh, yes. I'm not going back to the club, Todd. I'm coming home with you. <laughs> it's a beautiful surprise. And I'm going to make chin strapes for the living room like the club has and do the bathroom all over with a full-length mirror and everything, and I want a really smart kitchen. Lots of color like they're doing now. Oh, of course, it'll take lots of work, but I don't care. It's a nice idea. And then there's our room. I want to do it over completely, make it modern and smart and sexy. Uh, let's celebrate first. Uh, it's a wonderful day. Let's make the most of it, shall we? Todd sounded gay, but his face was sad. He stared straight ahead, and we drove miles and miles without talking. And then at last we turned in at the lake and parked near the beach. Isn't it awfully quiet? You sound frightened here. Remember, I'm with you. I'll always be with you. You know, Emily, we could live a whole lifetime and never find anything better than we have right here. A soft wind, a bright day, and you and I together alone. Mm hmm this we will have forever. Alone? Forever? Now, I'll get some blankets out of the back. I have to take good care of you, you know. I sat there while he went around to the back. And I was alone again. I was always alone. Did Todd bring me out here to, to leave me? Oh, no, Emily. Oh, put up a brave front. I'll powder your face and fix your lips. I opened my purse and groped around for my lipstick. Oh, dear, it wanted to spill like that. I reached down to pick up my things, the lipstick and the compact, and my hand touched something under the seat, a little box. I picked it up, but it was heavy. I read the words on the label, 38 caliber soft-nosed cartridges, bullets. I looked down at the box in my hand, and it was only half full. My hands shook, and my heart pounded. I could hear Todd rummaging around in the back, and I put the cover back on the box. And then there he was at the side of the car. All set. I've got the blankets. I couldn't say anything. You all right? Yes. Well, come on, then, darling. Let's go get out on that beach. I held the box under my purse as I got out. Here, let me help you. I'm all right. You lead the way. Okay. 
The box of bullets in my hand terrified me, and I followed Todd three or four steps, and then I let the box slip out of my hand, down in the leaves and the gravel. Oh, here we are. I'll spread the blankets. Now, come on, darling. Let, let's curl up and take it easy. Thank you. <sighs> Look at that lake, will you? Todd, what were you going to do with those bullets in the car? Bullets? What bullets? That box of bullets I found in the car. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about any bullets. Uh, that imagination of you... But I saw them. I held them in my hands. That box was about half full. Come here, darling. Close to me. Here. Todd, I'm sure darling, I saw... please. Do you feel all right? I don't know. I ache all over. It feel tight again. Terribly. Here. You put your head on my shoulder. That's it. There. I'll rub away the pain. Mm. You're hitting me. Oh! Hey, anything the matter? Oh. Where'd you come from? Well, I was just passing. I heard the lady. She's all right, just a headache. Oh. Thought she wasn't feeling well. The way she looks. She's all right. Lonely place out here to get sick. Well, excuse me for bothering you. Where did he come from? I thought we were alone here. Alone? Alone. Together, Emily. I will always be with you. Without you, it would be unbearable. It, it would be impossible. What? That's the one fact in all this. Oh, if I was sure. I have to be sure, Todd. Oh, those nightmares I have, they're Forget horrible. Them. Forget them. Now put your hands in mine. There. There, that's real, isn't it? I get so scared. I hardly sleep at all. It shows, doesn't it? Oh, of course not, darling. Why, when you came down the stairs today, you were radiant. Was I? Was I really? You were beautiful. Why is it? Why am I like that sometimes and then sometimes... You're tired, Emily, tired. Yes. Relax, Mrs. Ward. You must relax, Mrs. Ward. That's all I ever hear at the club. <laughs> You'll hear it here, too. Only with a difference. Relax, Mrs. Ward. In my arms. Oh, Todd. Oh, you do want me. Emily. Emily. In all the world, there could never be another woman like you. Never. Todd, I dream of this. I live for it. Yes, Emily. Emily, listen to me. No, Todd, please. Darling, it isn't good for you. I don't care. But the doctor said... What doctor? You know. You know when you went to see the doctor. But that was ages ago. You all talk behind my back, so I can't hear what you say. You and Mrs. Hallett. I, I just asked her how you were. You must believe I love you, Emily. Oh, I do. I do. Oh, darling. Oh. I'm so happy, darling. So am I. Look, look, over there's where we've built the sand castle, remember? And the wave melted it. <laughs> oh, it was pretty while it lasted. All the shells. Oh, Todd, that, that was the day when I was caught in the undertow. But I, I rescued you. But not until, not until I called and you didn't hear and I was sinking down deep and everything was black. And but you've forgotten alone. how it was. I, I was asleep on the raft, but I heard you. I called to you. Why, I, I was there in less no, than a I minute. No, I dream about it. I'm sinking down in the black and you're not there. Emily. How could you leave me? I'll be with you always, Emily, always. Oh, let's get away from here, Todd. I don't like the lake anymore. It's so, so bare and so alone. Emily, it's a perfect place. No, no, let's go into town. L let's go to that Italian place, Giorgio's. You said we'd go to all the places and celebrate, I mean, and there'll be lots of people around. People? And, yes, it'll be fun and we can have dinner at Giorgio's. It'll and... be crowded, Emily. No, no. Uh, let's... Say, uh... Did you lose this? What? This box of bullets. Your bullets? Yeah. Found them in the sand just a few steps from your car. But maybe you dropped them. Yes. Yes, I dropped them. Those are the bullets I found in the car, Todd. The very same ones. Is the box half full? Yeah, about half full. 
38 caliber soft nosed cartridges, says on the box. Well, I, I. Oh, I. I'll bet I know. I let Ernie take the Ernie? car. Yes, yes, yes. He's, he's gone in for target practice. Ernie? Who's he? Why, he, he's. Maybe he got them for you. Yeah, I figured they were yours. Looked like they'd just been dropped beside your car up there. Well, thanks. Uh, come on, Emily. If dinner at Giorgio's will make you happy, then it's dinner at Giorgio's. Well, how do you like that? What? That sign, Giorgio's, under new management. Probably isn't as good as it used to be. All right, just pull right in, sir, and park over there. What became of Giorgio? Oh, uh, he sold out. Well, just park over there. If it's under new management, Emily, chances are it's not as good as it was before. Uh, you're blocking the driveway. Pull in, will you? Yes, at least you can go in and look, Todd. He parked the car and went into the restaurant. I was alone again. Alone again. Relax, Emily, relax. Oh, but why was Todd always gone? If he didn't come out in a minute, I'd go in after him. But, oh, he would come out, and, and then we'd go in and have dinner. I'd make up my face and be all ready for him. My hands shook, and I couldn't get my lipstick on straight. It smeared. What I needed was a cigarette. I opened the glove compartment. Map, flashlight, gloves. Oh, no cigarettes. But there was an envelope. I pulled it out. It was addressed to Todd at his office, Mark Payson. I unfolded the letter. Dear Mr. Ward, Dr. Kernitz today confirmed what we have felt for some time concerning Mrs. Ward. Her condition is becoming progressively worse. Since we are not equipped here at the rest home to provide care for manic depressive patients, we should appreciate your making other arrangements for her at your earliest possible convenience. Sincerely, Bertha Halleck. In a moment, we continue with suspense. If you fellas and gals in the service will bear with me for a minute, I'd like to put in a pitch for the United States Armed Forces Institute, better known as USAFI. Here's an educational setup that reaches every corner of the globe. So, no matter where you're stationed or what you'd like to study, USAFI is your baby. Not only can you take a variety of courses by correspondence, by teaching yourself without submitting lessons, or by group study, but you're also given what we call final exams for both military and civilian credit. You receive the results, too, no matter which branch you're in. If your grades are satisfactory, they can help you get the rate you're entitled to in the services or the job you'd like to take when you return to civilian life. They can also help you enter the college or university of your choice. If your grades are not what they should be, you're given the chance by USAFI to be retested for a better grade. Thousands of service personnel have taken advantage of USAFI's service and have benefited by it. Why don't you? For a uniform education, study with USAFI. And now, we continue with Celebration, starring Miss Joy LaFleur, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. That dreadful Mrs. Halleck making up stories about me. Writing Todd, telling him I'm a manic depressive. Well, if she'd go that far, what hasn't she told the others at the club? All my friends. Friends until she started her lying stories, but... Here comes Todd out of George House. I mustn't let on. I know about the letter. I jammed it back in the glove compartment and slammed the door. Honey, this place looks terrible. Why don't you want to take me here, Todd? You promised. It isn't that, darling. It just isn't the same. It's run down and dirty. It wouldn't be any fun for you. I know. We'll drive out into the country, find a quiet no, spot. No, no, Todd, please. No, let's drive into town. We can have dinner at the hotel and there'll be music and we can dance. You know excitement isn't good for oh, you. Oh, please, Todd, please take anything me Anything the to... matter here? Uh, no, 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 my wife doesn't feel well. Oh, anything I can do? No, everything's all right, oh, thanks. let's drive into the hotel, Todd.
Here. Let's drink to us, dear. To us? Oh, Todd, do you really mean it? More than anything else in the world. Now, what would you like to eat? What's on the menu? Oh, lots of good things. Roast beef, southern fried mm-hmm. chicken, lobster, thermidor. Mm-hmm. Waiter. Yes, sir. We'll order now. Yes, sir. What would you like, darling? I'll have the southern fried chicken. Good. Oh, sorry. I'm afraid the chicken is all gone. Oh, and that's the one thing I want. Southern fried chicken and everything that goes with it. I'm sorry. Would you try? Maybe there's just one order left. Please. Uh, I'll see what I can do. You, sir? Lobster thermidor. Yes, sir. Tom, they're playing a rumba. Would you like to dance? Oh, yes, let Come on. Your face lights up, darling. Mm, being in your arms again. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Todd, I've forgotten how to dance. No, no, just, just relax. Follow me. Oh, oh excuse us, please. Pardon me. The music is right. And why is everybody bumping into us? Maybe, maybe we'd better go back to our table. Yes, let's. I hate that. Where's my purse? Oh, uh, on this chair. And bulging full. What have you got in there? Your letters. Oh, no. I read them over and over. Look, you wrote me this one from Omar. Darling, you are my happiness. I can't live without you. Emily. You are as necessary as the air I breathe. How many people have this You are home to me. Emily, give me those letters. No! I don't want you to read them. You can't have them. They're mine. You wrote them to me. Be quiet. I'll put them back in my purse. Don't you mean what you said? Of course I do. Oh, oh, look, here's the waiter without food. Uh, May I serve you, madame? What's that? Uh, Fried chicken. Todd, you know I never eat anything fried. But but the lady insists it's a southern fried chicken and everything that goes with it. Yes, I know. Well, to take it away, will you please? I'll pay for it. Yes, sir. Well, maybe this once won't hurt. Very good. The, The lobster, sir. Not very appetizing chicken. Looks good to me. Taste it. What are all these people making so much noise about? Don't take me home. I'm not hungry. I want to go home. Please, will you try to understand? We sublet our house three months ago when you went to... When I what? Darling, we have no house. It's our house. Take me home. Oh, please, darling, please. Please, dear, you must realize we no longer have a house. Todd was talking, but I couldn't seem to hear what he was saying. My ears were ringing and my head was tightening until I could scream. And inside I was was all stirred up. Why was everyone making so much noise? The music rasping and lights dazzling everywhere I looked. The best thing we can do is to get out of here. Come on, darling. car keys. Todd, are you taking me home? We're going where we can be together, always. Where it's quiet and peaceful. Where? To the place up in the hills, where we used to park before we were married. No, No, Todd, I want to go home. Isn't this our eighth wedding anniversary? Aren't we celebrating? Emily, we'll see the starlight through the trees and listen to the crickets. Two lovers, alone in the dark. Where are those keys? Maybe, maybe they're in your top coat in the back seat. I'll reach over and see. No, 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 no. They're not there. What makes your coat so heavy. Oh, something dropped out of it. A revolver. Leave it there. What do you want with a gun? Oh, here are the keys. Todd, were those bullets for that gun? You've got to trust me, Emily. Oh, I do, Todd. I want to. But I found those bullets and then and that letter from Mrs. Halleck. What letter? Oh, that double face. Pretending to be nice to me and then writing like that to you and you pretend. Emily, try not to get so excited. And those bullets? Try to... You said they were Ernie's. Who's Ernie? Ernie's a fellow I met. You have to remember, Emily. You've been gone a long time, a long, and long time. And is the gun Ernie's too? Yeah, half an hour ago. I told you I loved you. Remember? Yes, yes, I know you did, but... Well, I do. I love you more than anything in the world. 
Why are you slowing down? This is the turn-off to our special parking place. You used to call it our paradise, remember? Well, now we're coming back to it again. Getting away from the whole world, from everyone, everything. To be alone together. Oh, Todd, I'm so tired. Take me home, please. Let go, dear. Don't grab my arm. Take me back to the club. Any place. Just, just drop me off. Just keep your hands off the wheel, Emily. You're going to kill me, aren't you? Don't, 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 don't think of it that way. You must. You are, aren't you? You're, you're not well, Emily. You're never going to get well. Oh yes, I will, darling. Yes, I will. I'm going to get well. I'll get over being nervous. I'll be no. a real wife to you, a real wife. I'll be everything you want me to be. I can't live without you, Emily. But you said we'd always be together. Oh, we will, we will. And this is the way, Emily, together. No, no, no! Let go of the wheel, darling. <laughs> Got it all down, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Every word of it. Now, Mrs. Ward, do you remember anything else? No. We just went out to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Please. Please let me see Todd now. <sighs> Mrs. Ward, your husband is gone. Gone? Where did he go? Your husband is dead. Dead? He told you to say that. He doesn't want me. Watch her now, Sergeant. He can't leave me. He can't. Don't you said we'd always be together. You said I was your life. The air you breathe. But then, Tom, you can't leave me alone. Tom! Sergeant. Yes, sir. Give me a hand here. Tighten up those straps. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I guess it's the state hospital for her. She certainly is strong, considering. Yes. She'll probably live a long, long time. Suspense. In which Miss Joy LaFleur starred in William N. Robeson's production of Celebration by Phyllis Parker and Arnold Marquis. Listen. Listen again next week when we bring you another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Supporting Miss LaFleur in celebration were Irene Tedrow, Shepard Menken, Joe DeSantis, and Jack Moyles. Suspense has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Suspense. Suspense. 